You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Productivity, winning strategies, and aligning employer-employee goals. If this sounds like something your business could use more of, then you've come to the right place. The Business Mechanic Show with your host, Vaughn Sigman. Let Vaughn show you how to develop, improve, and jumpstart your business. So now, please welcome the host of The Business Mechanic, Vaughn Sigman. This is your host, Vaughn Sigmund, and you're listening to the Business Mechanic Show here on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. We're also live on YouTube, and you can catch the recording of the show later this week for viewing or your listening pleasure. I really appreciate all of you joining me today. Topic Are car dealerships dinosaurs? And they just don't realize it yet. I'm pretty sure, but not certain. Sure. That the, that the dinosaurs did not know they were going to become extinct until they became extinct. Let's make a little more modern analogy. The one I'm going to tie the rest of the show to. Are, are they dealerships or car dealerships? Are they Blockbuster or are they Netflix? Changes in customer trends and technology have had major impact on, a, on almost every industry, including the car dealership model. Think about what the smartphone, just the smartphone, has done to change our lives since July the 29th, 2007. We're celebrating the 10-year anniversary of the iPhone, the device that has made such a huge change in our lives. And I'm going to talk about some of those as we go through the show. Now, the, the smartphone is as ubiquitous as breathing. These devices are, are creating disruption in so many ways, including retail. Thousands of retail brick and mortar stores are shutting down. You all know that. And chains of stores that were once household names are now gone, just like the dinosaur. You know, the, the limited. They filed for bankruptcy and liquidated in 2017. Circuit City, they filed for bankruptcy in 2008 and liquidated in 2009. As I was doing research for all these retail chains and industries that have been affected over the past decade or so, you know, I came up almost forgotten about linens and things. Now they're an online retailer of home textiles, housewares, decorative home items, that sort of thing. But until 2008, the company also did business across the United States as a big box retailer. Sports Authority closed 450 stores in 2016. And we tie all this back to Amazon's dominance. You know, Amazon has been bolstered by, in some cases, lower prices, but, you know, a lot of options, but more importantly, increased convenience for the shopper. And that has caused stores across the malls and shopping centers in America to take a huge hit. Carol retailer Air Postal filed for, for bankruptcy in, in May. L later that month, J.C. Penney announced that it would, it would cut payroll and freeze overtime for its employees. Now, I got to tell you, I think they're on intensive care. Sears is in the same but worse boat along with Kmart. They're closing over 200 locations. In fact, they just announced an additional 43 stores a couple days ago in hospice care right now. Meanwhile, meanwhile, all along, back at the ranch, in their most recent earnings report, 
posted profits for the fourth consecutive quarter, record profits for the fourth consecutive quarter, and the price of Amazon stock has spiked about 30% since February. And on the heels of all those stellar earnings, the fortunes of its CEO and founder, Jeff B, had soared by $6 billion. And in doing research for this show, I, I, I just I literally found hundreds of retailers in retail formats, shapes, sizes, products that are gone and never to be heard from again. All victims of the changing consumer demand and expectations and the advent of all this technology. Now let's go back to that smartphone. 70% of all web searches are done from these devices. Most retail purchases are now done from the comfort of one's hand via the smartphone. What used to take a trip in a car to a mall or a store, requiring hours of our day, can now be a few seconds via device that's no larger than a deck of cards. You'd be hard pressed to come up with any profession or industry that's not been altered in some way to adapt to the advent of these devices in our lives. Doctors, you might come, but you'd be wrong. There's now an app for requesting a board certified position to come to your home in under an hour, just like Uber. The Heal app. H-E-A-L. And Dr. Drew is an advisor and is now operating with them in the Los Angeles market to be growing. So you think about all the things you buy in your home, groceries, meals, clothing, shoes, art, electronics, office supplies, dating. Dating. Yeah, you don't even have to go to a bar and get up the nerve to go talk to some strange person to get a date anymore. Just swipe on your smartphone and you have a date. And, and, and maybe more from what my young single friends are telling me. So, so my point is here, it's time. The time is now. Time is everything now. Technology and the smartphone has changed damn near everything. And, and on, I work for a consulting group out of New York from time to time. They use me as an expert in the car industry. I know a few things about this, this business. Recently, they started to offer to pay me. They offered an option to pay me via Amazon gift cards. Well, hell, we spend a ton of money in my home at Amazon, and, and they don't even have to mail it to me. Electronically, it just goes right into my Amazon account. And I think I have, I don't know, several thousand dollars in credit at Amazon. And you know what? I'll use every damn penny of it. So we make so Decisions based on our time and convenience. And what's easier for us? Should we go to the store or pull out my smartphone and buy in seconds? And 90% of the time for me, it's the phone. I, I can't tell you the last time I went to a mall, a Target, a Kohl's, a North, other go to places. No, I just go to their website and grab what I need in seconds. Now, the big question is are car dealers? appropriate changes to meet the demands of the consumer of tomorrow. Now, hell, even maybe even the consumer of today. This business is huge. It's a trillion dollar a year business, almost a trillion dollar a year business. There will be 18 million or so new cars sold this year. 44 million used cars will be sold this year. And there's a, there's a reason we study history, which is one of my favorite subjects. Bill Brown, my high school history teacher. The blockbuster and Netflix history lesson is, I believe, one that car dealers can easily learn from, or they're going to learn from it. They need to start investing. Car dealers need to start investing today in to and understanding what the car shopper wants in the buying experience. It's changing, and my warning is Start making the needed changes and not end up on a lifeboat wondering what just happened, like Blockbuster did. As Wayne Grass famous said, you have to skate to where the cup pucks, you have to skate to where the puck's going to be. And another 
let me note this as part of the Blockbuster deal. Blockbuster and car dealerships had a common Wayne in there, Wayne Izinga, who was the major investor involved in both the original Auto Nation used car superstores and in Blockbuster, both of which missed the mark on what the customer wanted. And neither of these, neither of these companies made the right moves in time to save themselves from extinction. Both ended up in a major fail. AutoNation at the time was one of the biggest corporate failures bankruptcy in history. So AutoNation still lives on in a very different form. We're going to go to break. And when we come back, I'm going to give you a little bit more of a history lesson and learn more about are they Blockbuster or Netflix. Be right back. Dr. Rob Moyer is the director of the Ocean River Institute, and he is passionate about saving the ocean by helping dolphins suffering from nitrogen pollution. Nitrogen is a dangerous pollutant, affecting our oceans, altering ocean ecosystems, and contributing to global warming. The Ocean River Institute provides opportunities to make a difference and encourages people to go the distance for savvy stewardship of a greater and bluer planet Earth. Partnered with organizations from Massachusetts to Florida, Alaska to the Caribbean, the Ocean River Institute's mission is to foster involvement in conservation and environmental monitoring by facilitating grassroots efforts at local and regional levels. Hello, I'm Rob Moyer of the Ocean River Institute. Please visit our website at oceanriver.org. Sign up for free e-alerts. You may call us at 617-661-6647. Our email address is info at Ocean River. Become informed and then act with us. Thank you. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Well, this is your host, Vaughn Sigmund, and you're listening to the Business Mechanics Show here on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And we're also streaming live, and you can catch that recording later. The show's being recorded. You can watch it later, listen to it later. I appreciate you joining me today. We're talking about partnerships and doing a little bit of a history lesson and then looking into the future. Our car dealers going to end up being blockbuster or Netflix. Now, we were talking about Blockbuster and their association with Wayne Huizinga, who also was associated with Blockbuster, which I'll get to in just a couple minutes. And like I say, AutoNation still lives on, but they failed back in the late 90s, one of the biggest corporate failures ever. Compared And they lost. They lost in a competition to CarMax. And CarMax has is, is always been very good about spotting trends, looking over their shoulder at any new competition or shifts in consumer demand, and most importantly, acting on it. That's one of the reasons why it's up to six times the number of used cars anyone else in the business does. And hey, they learned, a, they learned their own lesson from their founding company, Circuit, which is a whole other case study we won't get into today. But first, I want to give you a little history lesson on Blockbuster to remind you a little bit. And thanks to Wikipedia for all this information. Blockbuster, American-based, they provided home movies and video games, rental services through rental shops, DVD by mail. For a brief time, they had some streaming and video on demand too late in the game. They achieved popularity during the 80s and 90s up into the mid-2000s, and at its peak in 2004, Blockbuster consisted of 60,000 
with over 8,000 stores. And they absolutely dominated the video rental business. I mean, does not remember Friday afternoons or evenings picking out the movies for the weekend, going down to the Blockbuster store. You know, be kind and rewind. It's another example of technology. And I came across doing my research this next little tidbit that I thought was really interesting. I hope you do too. And in 2000, partnered with Enron in an attempt to create a video on demand service. Yeah, Enron, that Enron, that fine example of corporate stewardship and Blockbuster worked on a partnership. And initially that partnership was supposed to last 20 years. However, Enron, they chose to terminate the deal only a few months later over fear that Blockbuster could not provide sufficient films for the service and think it was going to work. Looking back, it's a good history lesson. Also, also in 2000, I thought this was even funnier, the blockbuster, bot, bot, blockbuster turned down a chance to purchase the still-fledgling Netflix, $50 million. Wow, how things would have been different for Blockbuster had they done that deal. So has anybody out there heard of Carvana, Shift, Vroom? Well, if you haven't, they're all smart little companies today, just like Netflix in 2000, with a very different approach to selling cars based on what they believe is the way cars will be sold in the next five to 10 years. None of them at this point are selling a lot of cars and the scale of things are not a gnat on an elephant's ass. The, the bigger of, the, of that group, they're going to do about $300 million in sales, maybe a little bit more than that. And that sounds like a big company, but remember the scale of the industry. The average used car sells for about $20,000. So they're going to sell 1,500, 1,800 cars this year. That's out of 44 million used cars. So they barely show up with a, even a, a, they barely break into the percentile of market share. That's pretty small. Just like Netflix a couple decades ago. Now back to our blockbuster history lesson. As a result of various factors, including competition from Netflix, some other video demand services, Blockbuster lost significant revenue in the late 2000s and on through 2010. And in 2010, they filed for bankruptcy. And in 2011, the remaining 1,700 stores, remember they, they had at their peak 8,000 stores, the remaining 1,700 stores were bought by satellite television provider Dish Network. And today, a few years later, there are less than 50 old remnants of Blockbuster stores still around, mostly in Alaska. That's another weird piece of history. Blockbuster made the mistake. I'm afraid of, that many of today's current car dealers are going to repeat, which they did not adjust to the trends consumers were demanding. Now, let's look at the company that put Blockbuster into extinction, Netflix. They were founded in 1997. Their initial business model was similar to Blockbuster, but they did it a little differently. They did DVD sales and rentals through the mail. Although they, after a few months after the start, the, the founder you know, eliminated the sale part of it just to focus on the, the thing that was working best, which is the, the rental business by mail. In, in 2007, marching forward, Netflix expanded business with the introduction of streaming media. And man, what a game changer that's been. While still retaining the, the rental service, which is now a very small portion of their business. And, and, and what was a game changer then was you no longer had to go to the to pick out your movies, unless you got to on Thursday, so you, you, you wouldn't get them by the weekend by mail. They were already on top of this whole saving thing. So 10 years ago, see the connection? Netflix started streaming video the way consumers without having to leave the comfort of their home or even go into the mailbox to get their DVD. 
The company expanded internationally, available in Canada in 2010, continued growing its streaming service from there. In January 2016, Netflix operated in over 190 countries. And in 2017, they reported over 93 million subscribers worldwide, including more than 49 million right here in the United States, which is practically every home in America. And I'm betting anyone here in this is a Netflix subscriber and enjoy the ease of service and broad selection, just as my family does. And the consumer continues today. It's pasted all over everything. Make it easy, make it fast, and thank you, Amazon. Let's see what needs to start our business. We're going to go to break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about the needed changes, in my opinion. Don't go anywhere. This is good stuff. I'll be right back. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran-owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interests through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. This is your host, Vaughn Sigmund, and you're listening to the Business Mechanics Show here on BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio. We're also streaming right now live on YouTube, and you, if you can't watch it now, we record it, and you can listen to it or watch it later this week. Hope you do. So before we went to break, we were talking about the changes that the car business, the auto dealership world came in order to not become extinct like Blockbuster did. So what needs to change? Well, the I think it's the most obvious and glaring one to me, outside of technology. Car salespeople have the distinction of being number one in a very dubious category. They are the least trusted profession in America. Can dealers not be motivated by that? In fact, just a couple days ago, I was talking to a new contact, making a friend, new contact of mine. And, of course, we start talking about cars, which anyone who knows me, if they're going to hang out with me, they're going to talk about cars. And he shared with me, as many people do, almost everybody that we are talking about cars, they share almost exactly the same experience. This one was recent. I'm going to share it with you. He purchased, he purchased a car, bought a new Mustang long ago. And he came right out and expressed what I'm sharing to you today. And he told me he would never go to dealership and buy again. And, of course, I asked why. And he said, and, and he's got pain on his face. And he says, a freaking hassle. It took me four hours, four hours to buy a car. 
that I went in knowing exactly what I wanted, knew they had it. I just needed a price, sign some paperwork, and get out of there. Yet it took him four hours as they played games, and he sat around doing nothing for most of those four hours, waiting on his salespeople to do whatever he was doing. It doesn't take that long. It does not take that long. Why does it take that long? Well, by doing things like this, this continues to perpetuate the, this lack of trust. Just do not trust the people they interact with in car dealerships. And why? Well, I'll tell you. In a study I was a part of, a, I found out a lot of those answers. And during that study, we followed a hundred car shoppers and we followed them for 90 days. It's a little bit of a blind study. They didn't know who was, was doing the study, but they knew we were doing the study with them. So it was all voluntary and we tracked their activity monitors on their computers to track the websites they were going to, what pages they were visiting, how long they spit on those pages, what information was important to them. Was it features, benefits, safety, reviews, quality, and we found out a lot of surprising things. And one of those was YouTube. YouTube was the most visited website for their research. And apparently they just love getting independent reviews and feedback on the cars they're interested in. Things like a virtual test drive. And as they're doing their, their research, they'd add or eliminate, make some models based on what they were learning from these reviews. And these YouTube experts or so-called experts and in fact, the, the average person, this blew us away, average person we studied spent over 40 hours, 40 hours conducting research prior to ever contacting her. We were blown away by that, 40 hours. And as part of that study, we would conduct interviews with these, these participants on a week. And we, we wanted to stay informed on where they were, what their, their shopping process was. And one of the questions we naturally asked was, so much time doing this research? And there was several different motivations, but one single came out of every single person, one single motivation, every person we interviewed. Distrust, distrust of car salespeople. They wanted to have confidence. They wanted to arm themselves with confidence so that they wouldn't be taken advantage of because they know their dealers to trick them in some way to, to take them in with some silly game, these games that dealers play today. And what are dealers doing about that? What are they doing to not change the sales process to adapt to this horrible reputation and to adapt to the fact that the smartphone can eliminate this reputation pretty quickly. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit. And listen, I get it. I get that it's hard to be motivated to change when things are going pretty well. You have a monopoly. A monopoly on a business if you're selling cars. You're the only people who can sell your brand of cars, or new cars. And also some of the wealthiest people in the well, they came from the car business. They made their money in the car business. Real estate and cars, two big money makers. And why change? Why, why change when things are so good? The car business pays the people at the top very, very well. Why mess with that good thing? However, here's my warning. At some point, a Netflix is going to come along and start biting at your ankles. And then they're going to take a leg. And then you may not be able to recover, just like all those other retailers who are no longer in existence, they're extinct, because a better way came along, just like Netflix. And I ask you all, why not consider making a concerted effort to change this whole lack of trust issue? Yeah, today's car dealer, automotive dealer space, it's very fractured. It's not that com comparable truth to the Netflix blockbuster scenario. But it worries me, though, that I'm not seeing any news on dealers working on improving the perceptions of integrity and transparency. 
And I got to tell you, I think the manufacturers are complicit in it as well. There's so many hidden incentives. The average customer just says, I, not even though they exist. We're going to go to break. I'm going to talk about those, those hidden secrets that dealers love to keep you. And then we're going to start talking about my ideas on how they can improve their business model. We'll be right back. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact the symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. Welcome back. This is your host, Vaughn Sigmund. You're listening to the Business Mechanics Show here on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And if you can, we're streaming live on YouTube. Love for you to send me over any comments on the chat features that's on there. Appreciate it. It's being recorded. You can listen to the show later this week. So we were talking about Netflix, Blockbuster, car dealerships. And we're talking about this secret back-end money, these secrets that dealers keep hidden from the public. And I understand, I understand why they do that. Manufacturers encourage them to do that. They're complicit in all this as well. It's not against the law. It's just a very unconsumer-friendly business practice. There's so many hidden incentives out there. But when you're in a commodity business that, that today – the only way a dealer can stand out above every today, about just today, the only way a dealer can stand out is price. Well, or of course, that's the price they advertise. Does does that price stay, get there? You know, another reason that people don't trust you is is the is the car even there? I I, I can tell you, I, I recently conducted some of my own personal research. I worked in a dealership for several years. And I'd like to know how things have progressed. Maybe some changes. Before I did this show, before I did this this blog, before I did all this, I want to do my own research personally. And I got to tell you, having not bought a car from a dealership in a few years, I was very, very disappointed, surprised. So as part of my research, I chose a make and model of car. Went on their website, went on the manufacturer's website. Made sure I knew what options were available, packages, the colors, that sort of thing. So I, you know, I was educating myself like most consumers would. And then I took those preferences just like everybody would. And then I went to the local dealer's websites. First, the first dealer I went to had the best prices. And once I found out, they had the best prices by a mile. They were $1,500 to $2,500 less than anyone else in the market that I could find. They had the colors. They had the options. 
they had everything I wanted and it showed six of the cars I was looking for on their website. And also on their website, I can consumer, they gave me the option to get pre-approved for financing. Not everybody has that. And I was, man, I thought these guys really got it going on. Great price. They're making it easy for me to find the price on a the car. They got a pre-approval application on there so I can get pre-approved before I go in there. They're starting to do things for me like I want it done, that I can I can get pretty deep into this process without having to talk to anybody in a car dealership. You know, I'm impressed with it so far. I don't have to talk to anybody. I can get a lot of things done. And then once getting that done, and even listening to the application, on the application, the exact car I was looking for, I submitted the pre-approval, submitted the car I was looking for, sat back, and I the ring and I waited and I waited some more and I waited all day got not a peep what could have gone wrong so the next day obviously my computer screwed up there's no way I would have done all this and a sale called me so I did it all over again I filled out the app submitted it listed the car I was looking for and got the same result so what the hell now, now I'm getting frustrated because I, I really, I, I wanted to buy a car. I was going to buy this car. If, if something had gone right, I would have been committed to buying this car. So I, I got, and I drove to the dealership just like the dealership wants me to. And I walk in, the place was busy. It wasn't crazy, but it was busy. But I had to stop somebody. Nobody greeted me. Nobody's paying any attention to me. I had to stop someone to talk to myself. And that person, they were walking across the showroom floor. I, I stopped him. I told him what I was looking for. And as part of my research, I wanted to include this. I asked him, are they working here? And his response was two weeks. And anyway, he, 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 was, he tells me he's with a customer. And he asked me, come back the next day. I said, okay, I'll play along. I agreed. We set an appointment. We set a time. And I again, I told him exactly what I was looking for, that I completed a pre-approval. I even handed him my printout of all the cars I was interested in, price, the VIN number, the stock number, everything. Next day comes along. Remember, this is my third day of trying to buy a car. The next day, I went away to get the dealership, get to that dealership on time. I had to drive from uh, through Los Angeles, rush hour traffic to get there. So that was a big house. I was about 10 minutes early, so I was proud of myself. I walked in. place was not busy, but, but was ignored. I was ignored by everyone for several minutes. And during those several minutes, I looked over, and not five feet from me was the sales manager desk, where there was working. Not five feet from me. And did one of them ask me if they could help me? Nope. They all stayed focused on that deal, that one of them which I think is kind of a, is an example of the, the mindset of the dealership world. It's what's right in front of them. They're not looking for They weren't looking over for that next customer. And on the other side of me was a reception desk with no one sitting at it. So again, stop someone, ask for a salesperson, and they were kind enough, or asked for my salesperson, they were kind enough to page my guy. A few minutes later, my guy comes over to me and tells me he's with another customer. Okay. Uh, but he was nice enough to hand me air quotes here, sales partner, who, by the way, would ask, had been there a week. This was her first week. So playing along. And again, remember, I'm committed to buying this car. I, I, I go through the whole thing again. Give her the cars I'm looking for that have been pre-approved. Now, I'll, I'll tell you when we come back from break what my next experience was, and I'm going to start wrapping with some great ideas, some simple ideas that what dealers need to be doing in order to become much more effective and profitable in the minds of not only this consumer, but everybody else I know out there. So hurry back. We'll be right back. 
Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapula strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. This is your host, Vaughn Sigmund, and you're listening to the Business Mechanics Show here on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Check us out on YouTube Live as well, and be in, where it's all being recorded, so you can watch or listen to us a little bit later this week. So back to my story. I'm in the dealership. I'm with my second salesperson who'd been there all of a week. I give her my list of the cars that I'm prepared to buy, and guess what? All six cars, all six cars, not a, none, not a one of them was in stock. They were all in on order. Order or transit, which, by the way, is against California DMV law. I've got my dealer's license. I've sold millions of cars. Yeah, I know what the rules are. And you cannot advertise a car on your website for sale unless it's in stock. So, again, this goes to the whole perpetuation of distrust. They didn't have a single one of these cars. And you know, I'm going to wrap this story up. Yeah, you know, I'm playing along, but I'm going to wrap this story up. I'd never, I, by the way, she never called me back. None of these cars ever showed up. Two months later, I go back to the website, same cars, same cars, same cars, cars still aren't there. What a scam. So um, I went ahead and I, I, I cross shot two more dealerships, got almost the same experience. And in fact, as I was asking these questions about how long the salesperson had been there, the most tenured person. To, was there 90 days and that makes my point as long as as only certain dealers can monopolize on who you as a consumer can buy a car from they act however they want to because where else are they going to go just pick one that's less bad what a concept how sustainable is that car dealers you got to be looking over your shoulder at the upstarts they can become your competitors someday in fact, this is how oblivious some of them are. I recently spoke to a dealer principal. He owns a, a billion-dollar dealer group. And I asked him what his opinions were of Schiff, Room, and Carvana. And he never heard of them. Never even heard of them. I was, I got to tell you, I was completely shocked. But you think about today in, in, the, in the consumer world, the best advertising, either, any dealership outside of price, the best advertising they can get is word of mouth. And in the world of social media, you know, Facebook, Yelp, all that stuff, imagine the impact a dealer could have in a commodity business. You can only differentiate yourself today with price. They could dominate their competitors and probably make much, much more than their competitors are 
by just becoming the standout for providing exceptional customer service. The dealers who make that today would be a radical change where they're going to win the customer. They're going to win the customer loyalty game. And in the end, they're going to win the game. And yeah, you have loyal customers because they can't really buy from anybody else. And yes, some customers have a good buying experience, but it all is based on their perception of what a person experience is. I'm just telling you about mine. I'm telling you about the ones I've heard from dozens and dozens of other people. So when are you going to start making some changes there? Think about the people who are out there. They're easy to do business with in a commodity business. That's why they dominate outside of the car business. They're in a commodity business. The ones that are successful are the ones that are easy to do business with. And it's the rare car dealer that's easy to do business with. You know, the Internet's everything. They've changed the game. And what are car dealers doing to leverage that? We're back to my smartphone again. You take this, this lack of trust, cover, you know, all the information that's available to you know, someone who's willing to inform themselves. They're going to be armed with a ton of information. And, they're, and then they're making the buy-in decision. What are they going to do? Are they, it's, they want to avoid the hassle. If there is somebody out there that stands out from the crowd, according to their peers, consumers' peers, are easy to go shop with, and buy a car, man, that's where people, more people are going to go to. Going into a dealership is a freaking hassle. My experience is no different than just about anybody else's. But if you're going to go buy a, a, a new car, a late model used car, you got to go into a dealership. DMV laws dictate that in many states because of poor business practice on, practices on the dealerships. You have to, to see, see all the signs on the walls, the warning signs that dealers have to post. Now, not all the dealers follow that law. Some have gotten away with it for years. Okay, DMV, let it go. But those laws are in place for a reason. Consumers really don't want to spend four hours more buying a car. And, and take this in. I asked one auto dealer expert, as I was doing research again, and one auto dealer expert, opinion, has there not been more transparency, upfront transparency on pricing? Because customers really hate haggling, haggling over this. And he told me exactly the way I expected him to, to, to respond to me. Dealers, they can't do that. Because their monthly back-end incentives for the manufacturer, they really don't know what they can sell that car for. So, so you know, back-end money, that's what commonly referred to as hold back money, back in money. It's based on the volume of units being sold, or either on makes or models, dealership. Sometimes it includes customer service scores, on, primarily on the service side of things. Some dealers can make between an extra $100 to $1,500, $2,000 or more in incentives that the consumer never knows about. You can buy a car all day for invoice. That's not what the dealer's paying for my friends. So I call BS on what my auto industry expert said about transparency of pricing. The point is, pricing isn't hard to be transparent with. I did it for years at CarMax in two different new car dealers, two that I was responsible for. And somehow, we can adjust the prices whenever we needed to based on these incentives. We took advantage of those two. We passed and it's a law to the consumer. And we did fine with that approach. In fact, one of those dealerships was the second largest Toyota dealership in the nation. Another was a, a Jeep Dodge dealer that was Chrysler that was generally bounced between the third, third or fourth largest in the nation. So transparency and pricing, you can do it if you want to, but most choose not to because it's all about making the most rather than making it easy for you to go buy a car, which is just very short-term thinking and runs a very, very strong risk of you becoming extinct. When we come back, I'm going to talk about some other examples of what car dealers can be doing. Very easy steps to become more relevant today. We'll be right back. 
Hello, everybody. This is Coach Betty Louise, and I have a question for you. When is the last time you looked in the mirror and saw your amazing beauty and sexuality? 80% of women do not have a positive body image. 97% of women do not like something about their bodies, and over 10 million women have eating disorders. In addition, at least 40% of women are sexually repressed, and one in seven marriages are sexless. I've just completed a book called Healing with Pleasure Medicine. What I will teach you is what gets in the way of your ability to see your beauty, sensuality, and sexuality. How to shift your perception to increase pleasure throughout your entire day. Okay, the place to find all of this information is CoachBettyLive.com. One more time, CoachBettyLive.com. Look forward to connecting. Essential Nutrients, LLC is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients, LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. This is your host, Vaughn Sigmund, and you're listening to the Business Mechanic Show here on BBM Network. And tune in radio. We're also on YouTube Live right now. So we're going to finish up this discussion today on or Netflix. Dealers, what are you going to be? And I'm going to talk about some of my viewpoints on what I think dealers can be doing, should be doing, in order to avoid becoming extinct. First, change your reputation. And one of the easiest ways to change your reputation Side of changing your business practices is hire and engage really good salespeople. Start with your salespeople. These customer facing reputation builders, the individuals that are the first and the last memory of their $37,000 on average, that by the way, they use every day. Take care of your people. They'll take care of your customers. Everything else will take care of itself. And the auto industry, the car dealer, the world is notorious for being very poor employers and just a general shift, just a simple general shift th- towards a be friendly environment. But you get that started right away, especially on the sales side. And you might have people longer than 90 days work for you. Quit hiring salespeople like cattle. Turnover in the auto in, 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 with auto salespeople is in the triple, triple digits, for God's sakes. And like I mentioned in previous shows, turnovers, turnover with your employees cost about 20% of their annual pay. And in a sales position, it's more like 50%. So hire slow, be selective, bring them into a culture that's fun and rewarding where they're treated like a valuable resource. Allow time for them to train, become competent. It typically takes 90 days before competence starts setting in. I didn't find one salesperson that car dealer for more than 90 days. I know there are some. I don't want to talk too broad a generality. It is just my experience, but it's more common than not. You know, car dealers are very disconnected from that aspect for some reason. Only They throw people out there like cattle, and only the strong survive. And the whole motivation is just to have warm bodies out there to greet your customers. They're not thinking about the long-term aspects of their decision-making when it comes to that. A few of these salespeople make it. So look around. What what other industry does this? Training and retention are big steps. Hanging on your people, building a better customer experience. Give them product training. Teach them how to really sell, not selling in a way that's going to put the most money in their pocket or your pocket, but by listening. Find out what the customer wants and give it to them. 
Teach them how to really build relationships with the customers. Teach them how to build through treating the customer, how they're treating the customer. Put people on the floor that you're proud of, that are going to be with you a long time. That translates to the customer, I promise you. And just quit the pricing games. Advertise the price the car is and kill the haggling. Customers hate that. And why is it in dealers' DNA that they have to hide the price or play these pricing games? Get focused on selling units. Build volume. Build on the dealership. Build a great, great customer experience. Pay a flat commission rate for each car. Forget about paying on gross profit. Take the commission completely out. Learn the right ways to sell cars online. The right way, customer, the customer's way. The right way is the customer's way. I'm glad you guys have joined me today. I hope I've stimulated some thought out there. I don't, I don't want it to be too late. I don't want any more Circuit Cities or Codex or Sears in the car dealership world. Contact me by phone, 714-421-6498. Visit my website, thesigmund.com. V as in Victor, S as in Sam, I-G-M-O-N.com. Check out my blogs, my previous podcasts, my videos. I'm available for a few appointments. You can make those on my website. I really appreciate everybody joining me today. Visit my YouTube channel. I really appreciate Vaughn Sigmund, the business mechanic. Subscribe while you're on there. Check me out on LinkedIn and Facebook, Vaughn Sigmund, the business mechanic. Thank you all very much. We'll talk to you next week. You've been listening to The Business Mechanic with your host, Vaughn Sigmund. If your business is in need of a good tune-up, let Vaughn get under the hood and put you on the right road to success on the next episode of Vaughn Sigmund's The Business Mechanic. been listening to the bbm global network the ideas views and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas views and opinions of the bbm global network company